All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, the basic uh, defibrillator modes that we need to know here in, in our unit, and especially when we respond to emergencies outside of our unit. Um, and some basic functions overall of, of the Philips monitor here. So um, you could just turn it on to monitor, just to monitor the patient's heart rate. Right now I have it hooked up to me, so it sees uh, my sinus rhythm there. Um, also, if you want to silence, this is the silence button. Oh, it's not silencing, but alarm's paused. Uh, going to defibrillator mode, you're going to use the dial, and you go to whatever uh, joule settings uh, the doctor tells you to. Uh, usually 150 if they're you know in a rest. Uh, 200 is the max. Say if you're doing cardioversion, you would keep, you would still use the manual defib joule settings, but 15 say... 15 seconds without sign of compressions. So, if we were doing a cardioversion, like I said, say for example, 100 joules is the first shock. You set it to 100 joules, you have your heart rate up, um, displayed on the monitor, and you want to sink... You want to press the sync button, and what you're looking for is these little white marks above the QRS, and it'll flash sync. And now you know that you're synchronized with the QRS waves, and you're okay to press shock. Then you charge. I'm not going to actually do it. You press charge. It'll charge to 100 joules. And then you press the shock, and it should deliver a shock synchronized with the patient's rhythm. Uh, another uh, setting, or the last setting I'm going to go over is how to use it as a pacemaker. So a lot of confusion has been uh, going on with this. You do need both the, uh, the, the three lead to be connected and the pads for this to work. Um, if you only have the pads on, it only works for cardioversion and defibrillation. It won't work for, pace, uh, for pacing, okay? So you guys have to have the leads and the pads on. So right now we'll assume that we have that on the patient. And uh, let's see, to take it off sync, I'm going to press the sync button because we're in pacer mode now. And then if you have to pace the patient, the first thing you're going to do is set the rate, right? So you do that by pressing down here at the bottom of the screen, you press the button here and um, use the arrows on the side here to titrate the rate up and down. Say they want the rate at 80, you can go ahead and titrate to 80 and then press the check mark to set it. Now you're set at 80 uh, beats per minute and then you need to set the output. Um, usually people start, I don't know, what is it, like 50 or 80 or something yeah. like that. So you start at like 50 and then set it and then you press start pacing. I'm not actually going to press it but start pacing and you're, you want to look if, um, unfortunately I can't show it in actual pacing mode uh, but you would see tick marks right in front of the QRS and uh, or you'd see tick marks along the rhythm line and you should see a QRS after that and if you see that that means that you're capturing if not then uh, you're not capturing and you would have to increase your pacer output the milliamps right until you see the capture and then start pacing and then you would look again assess your rhythm look for um, the pacer spike uh, followed by QRS and that's yep. basically what you look for yeah yep and it should also be about the heart rate that you choose yeah and it should be uh, like in this case set to 80 you should be seeing the heart rate up around 80 all right so that's it for the tutorial